just had this arrive from BCA. Obviously, as things are selling quick, I need to make sure I keep getting stock coming in. It's a 2008 Fiat Brava uh, 150 Sport. So it's the 1.9 diesel that's the same as in the GTs. Um, 150 brake horsepower, but these have got like 250 foot pounds of torque. They really do flipping fly along. I uh, picked this one up for £700, including fees and then delivery, so it owes me £800. I'd say it's a 2008. Um, it's only got, I think it's got 60,000 miles on it, if I remember rightly. And it's got nice sports interior in it. Overall bodywork wise on it, seems good. Must have a sticking caliper here because it's squealing. I took it for a quick drive, it's squealing a bit. And it's got loads of brake dust on it, so I reckon the caliper's sticking on that side. And then down this side, it's all good. The only bad bit is this front wing, but I found one on e a couple on eBay being broken in this black. So I'm just going to order up a ready a, a manufacturer's wing in the right colour because it's always quicker to fit. It's got an MOT, it's got seven months MOT on it, so I won't bother doing anything on that front, I don't think, because it's going to be a cheap car. Um, I'll offer the opportunity for them to get a new MOT on it if they want, um, but I'm probably going to 1995 it again, keep it under that 2K mark, and give it a service, um, obviously go over it all, make sure it's all good. But yeah, 1995 I think is probably the right mark for it. Once this is tidied up, once I've given this a clean and a buff and sorted out the, the wheels, cleaned the wheels up. And interior, this is going to be a really nice looking car. I can't imagine it would take too long, especially with um, the fact that we have lots of our customers come in that are sort of into the Fiat's and Alphas. I imagine this will go quick, but I won't mind having to drive it around a bit myself as well. I do like these. It's a great engine. If you've never driven the 150 brake horsepower 1.9 diesel in the Alphas, they do go really, really well. Anyway, today I need to crack on with the Honda. Got to clean the Mazda 2. I'm ready for its pickup. I've got to start on that Honda, so best get cracking. I think I've said the Hon I think I've said the Mazda sold, haven't I? It was up for less than 24 hours. I had loads and loads of messages on it. A couple turned up out of the blue to give a test drive and put the deposit on. So the Mazda 2 sold as well now. So we've only got the Yaris and the Honda left from that original lot. Oh, and the obviously I'm now advertising the Fabio. They went up on Saturday night. It's now Monday. I haven't had a message yet on that. Um, but we'll see what happens. It normally is a mad rush at the last couple of days of the month. I imagine this is when that might go. Anyway, let's get cracking. So it's now Tuesday morning, frustrating day yesterday, working on the Bravo caliper, everything was stuck. Nobody had the parts in stock, nothing wanted to come off. Uh, I've got a new disc and pads on there. Obviously changed disc and pads on the other side as well to match. Um, but I'm waiting on a brake caliper pipe for it. I'd noticed the fluid was low in the reservoir bottle. Filled it up just to check. I've come in this morning and it's all over the floor. And from what I can see in the engine bay, I think the water pump's gone on it. Um, looks like it's dripping down from the water pump, but needs a bit of investigation. So, no quick flip there. Um, I shouldn't really have taken it on when I've got the Honda to get done and the Yaris still to get done from the nine car flip but if you ain't buying cars you ain't making money so I'm going to, have to push it to one side for a bit and crack on getting these ready then crack crack on with that but I have got more cars arriving today I've got Dacia um, Sandero Estate turning up from Copart which is a cat car so we'll see what that's like when it turns up um, and I've got two other cars turning up as well I bought a um, what did I buy yesterday I bought a Hyundai i20, which is the first Hyundai i20 I've got, so that'll be interesting to see. And I got a Kia Picanto. The last Kia Picanto I had went well as well. So I've got those coming in today. And I've bought myself a little treat. And we're going to see what that turns up looking like. I've bought what I think is the cheapest, use the old Hoovy phrase, the cheapest 106 Rally, Peugeot 106 Rally Series 1 in the country at the moment. Um, that's being picked up today if it goes to plan so we'll see what's going on with that but today what I need to do is get that drivable again get the pipe on uh, for the caliper and get it drivable again get it out of the way uh, the Mazda's being picked up today so I need to clean the Mazda the Mazda 2 little Mazda 2 and that's been picked today so I need to clean that ready for the pickup 
then crack on with the Honda because that runs and drives perfectly. So there's no point getting focused up on that at the moment. Get the Honda ready and then get to, uh, then get onto this. Probably the Lar Yaris last, depending on what comes in with the other cars as well. Anyway, so yeah, it's not all roses. Sometimes this is the kind of things you get. Is it putting a water pump on the end of the world? No, not at all. It's just time. Um, and it was going to be a cheap car as well. So I'm going to be putting in more time into a car that is not going to generate huge profits anyway. But that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. So we've got more turned up. So we'll look and see what these look like. The Picanto and the uh, i20. So Mazda's gone. Just went off. Again, I'll work out the profits on that. I think it's around about £800. That was a nice flip. Didn't have to do a lot to that. I'm going to do them a free service in a year's time, like I've said, because it's just been serviced. I like to throw in a free service, so they'll be back for me with that. Um, like I said, just had the two cars in, had the Kia Picanto in and had the Hyundai, which obviously these aren't within the, the nine car flip. This is smoking, um, as in it's literally smoking. When I start it, I'm getting fuelly smelling smoke out of it and it's got no oil in it. So that'll be going straight back to the auctions. Um, I mean, there are dodgy stuff people can do, thicker oil, stop leak, that kind of thing. But uh, it's a shame, it's a nice little car, really nice little car and it'll be perfect for my clientele. But, and I'm sure it probably, you know, run run okay if you keep putting oil in it, you can probably do a few more miles on it, but no, it goes straight back to auction. Everybody within the trade understands the risks um, with a car when it goes. This is a BCA without a mechanical report, which is a top tip. They do do ones with mechanical report and condition report. Um, those are the ones you really want to go for because you've got some comeback if they've got a problem. If they've got no mechanical report, odds on are there's a problem with them unless they're the older cars, sub 2010 sort of age. But anything like this 2012 hasn't got a mechanical port is a bit of a red flag so we might lose a few hundred on that one um as always i'll be honest with you guys on that and tell you what the score happens with that the little black i20 um just drove that round and round the, the car park that seems to drive fine and it was marked down as quite low um condition wise but it actually seems really good condition so i'm wondering what the score is with that so i'll take that home tonight put some miles on it and we'll find out what the score is with that the first i20 i've had um Quite a nice looking look I'll have a quick look at it a sec. Like I say, I can't see anything on the body that's obviously a low score. I mean, it is dirty and it's black, so it may well have some stuff coming up. Um, oh, I've left the keys inside. But it's um, it's a nice looking little car. We've got alloys, we've got auxiliary and USB input on it, airbags, sides and front, Bluetooth. Looks like it could be a good little car. This hopefully it's mechanically sound because that could be the one just to quickly wash and get back out the door again but the um the picanto that's got to go back unfortunately never mind you can't buy the volume of cars we're buying and not have a duffer every now and then a bit like a citroen c1 that time right so i stayed late tonight it's wednesday still haven't got around to doing anything on the honda yet which was supposed to be the next car out of the nine car flip um because got deep into the brava it's got a leak from the egr um, coolant pipe which is what was leaking but now we've got to strip this part far apart we'll do a cam belt anyway um, and was fiddling around with the caliper had a bit of a frustrating day yesterday had a bit of a frustrating day today uh, which I'll go to in a bit more detail but what I've decided to do tonight is get on with this i20 and the reason being I drove it last night it drives perfectly it is immaculate inside and outside is mint as well um, it's done 106,000 miles, but you, I tell you what, if I took the number plates off this car, you would believe me that it was a, a three-year-old car. It's so clean. And so I hadn't looked at the service history yet because there was a big file came with it. I had a chance to look at that just a minute ago. Oh, my God. Every single stamp, bang on time. Not only that... Hold one second. Let's just clear the lens a bit. Not only that, but the car has got every MOT receipt since new, along with the actual invoices for each of the services. And it's had pretty much, you know, a regular engine flushes on it, uh, had all the right servicing down the pollen filters and so forth. Uh, as you can see, paint wise she shines like the proverbial diamond. All the alloys are completely curb free. Someone put door protectors on to make sure that the edge of the doors didn't get damaged. And the interior of the car, as normal, I'm late now, so, you can't really see with the light, but the interior of the car is immaculate. There is not a mark inside it. Um, so this one was a score. This one, I think, including delivery, I'm all in on this one for £1,200. Now, I think uh, this is a non-cat car. It was serviced on November 
uh, on 2020, so I don't need to service it. It's MOT to November 2020, so I don't need to MOT it. I think this is worth 2495 of anybody's money. I really do. Uh, drives fantastic. Uh, I don't care if you've got one out there with 70 odd thousand miles on it, a patch of history. With 106 on, with the history that's gone, this is the car to be having. Um, so I think 2495 is perfectly reasonable price for this. And I'm doing this one because obviously I don't need to do anything to it. So I get this up for sale tomorrow and then um, hopefully get cracking with the Honda. The someone can test drive the Polo to uh, the sorry the Fabia today. The Fabia doesn't seem as popular as the last few cars. Um, I think um, I don't know. I think just I think it needs to be a bit cheaper. Maybe I've got it up for uh, 1995 on a 57 plate. I say it needs to be a bit cheaper. I get sweaty if I don't sell a car 24 hours after listing it. Um, so it's only been up for 24 hours. And the people that saw it today did ask me to hold it for 24 hours for them to make the decision. Um, I think if they don't buy that, they'll buy something else off me. So I uh, get this up for sale tomorrow, photograph it in the morning when the light's back up again, and um, get that back up and running, and then hopefully hop on the Honda, get that ready. The part finally turned up for the Mitsubishi today, so I put the inner tie rod in on the little white Mitsubishi. Um, that's booked in for tracking on Friday. Girl's biting at the, chomping at the bit to get hold of that, and I want it on the door as well. It's about £1,300 profit in that. But over there in the gloom, you can't see it, I'll video it tomorrow, is the Dacia, um, Dacia, which model was that? It's the Sandero Estate. Uh, I think they call it the Logan. Um, that I'll show you in the morning. It's turned up, I missed on flipping Copart. It wasn't a run and drive. Scored at the bumpers in the, in the, in the boot of it that was damaged, so I'll be able to replace that. I'm pointing you into darkness now, so there's not a point, might as well get back to here again. Um, the bumper's in the boot on the Dacia, but I didn't note that it's a run, it's not a run and drive, and uh, I put a battery pack on it, and it, it's turning over, it won't start, and there's an engine management light on it. Now, it's obviously had a whack, it's got no cooling in it, but in the cooling bottle I can see what looks like steel seal or something like that, but it has had a frontal impact, a decent one that's broken the bumper. So it was obviously being run and drove. It's got a full tank of fuel. Someone was driving it. So I don't know what happened during the accident. I don't know if, I, don't know if, I can't imagine it got knocked hard enough to knock the timing out of it. Um, but that's going to need further investigation. That could be costly. It's a 2014. It does only owe me uh, 1,300 pounds. Um, and it's, uh, it's a five and a half grand car, non-cat. Cat, I was going to be looking at about three four nine five so i have got enough money to put an engine in it if i need to but uh it's just whether it's in this game you've got to work out whether it's worth the time yes i can put an engine in it but that's going to be three days to make a grand profit maybe as you can see if i can get something like this clean it polish it stick it out and make a grand profit or spend a day fettling with something and make 800 pound profit it doesn't make any sense to be putting an engine in that even though i can make a profit at the end of it so uh that's a decision that needs to be made but hopefully yeah hopefully we get the get that sorted get that polished get out for sale um let's see where we go from there so following morning and now you can see the dacia logan so this was bought from copart um as a category n now i did a rookie mistake on this one i missed that it's a non-runner which i don't recommend you buy unless you really know a thing or two about cars because it's rarely just a battery um so i missed it was a non-runner now I'm in £1,300 into this, it's a 2014 Dacia Logan uh, Ambiance with the 1.5 diesel engine. It's a nice car, really nice car, and I think it was a bit of a bargain at £1,300, but it doesn't run. Now the first thing I was going to need to get was a bumper, I nearly ordered one, but found out it's actually in the boot. So that's a big saving, and as we've seen on the previous videos, this is the kind of thing I can fix. So I've saved myself the bumper, it's gonna be 350 quid for the bumper, so that's good. So I'm all in, like I said, about 1,300 pound, including delivery and including fees. I'm only 1,300 pound into this. Normal retail for it would be about five, five and a half. So I'm looking to try and do a three, four, nine, five on this, maybe even a two, nine, nine, five, but it won't start. It just turns over and turns over. The general consensus from the shared wisdom of the units is that the timing might be out on it. That um, when it had a knock, it could have knocked the timing out. It wasn't a very heavy knock. It hasn't even damaged the crash bar. It's damaged nothing below it. It literally has cracked the bumper. So I can assume it was written off, 
not because of the bumper but because when it had the accident it caused the engine to cease working and people assumed it would need an engine and it was written off for that an engine's only 700 pounds and there's enough margin in the car to actually put one in but it would be a couple of days work and i'm not sure i want to do that so what we're going to do first is get the timing tools in it it's just on charge at the moment get the timing tools in and see if the engine is in time so we basically get it to top dead center and we put the pins in and see if the engine is where it should be if it's out we might be lucky if there's no valve damage we could reset the timing do a cam belt change on it and we might be lucky if we do we could be quids in but this is the way this is what happens if you don't pay attention it can bite you in the ass. the rest of the car is in really nice condition um, it's really well spec'd out with cruise control uh, Bluetooth really good spec for a Dacia and it's only done 60,000 miles on a diesel needs a good clean so yeah i'll be keeping you updated on what happens with that but that that's a rookie mistake of mine there make sure you read the listings properly now the kia picanto that was smoking like i said would have to go back would also be a bit of a dog um i read up a lot on it and the, i think i've said this already the pcv valves here the vent the uh vent the engine um top end of the engine there from the build up the pressure build up of the smoke and so forth it's um they can fail and you basically if you take it out and you try and compress the spring back and forth it will um it'll tell you whether it's any good or not or whether it needs cleaning out and apparently that can cause because it the crank can't vent it the, the casing can't vent itself it pushes it out through the exhaust so fingers crossed on that one i'll show you what i'm talking about i think i've got the little no i haven't got it kicking around i'll show you a bit later in the video what it is it's a tiny little part only costs 25 pounds all in from kia so we're going to pop that in and fingers crossed because this will be a win if that runs and drives that'll be a win because other than that it just needs a little bit on the front bumper there and these fly out the door these little Kia Picantos so fingers crossed on that one I've got a little high under 20 up for uh, advertised now that's all cleaned up uh, parked over at my friends because I've run out of space so the little Kia Picant uh, the little um, i20 which is a brilliant car and a history file on it's like that I think I've already said that's up for sale just went up a few hours ago so we'll see how we get on with that and there is a chap very interested in the skoda the bonnet looks worse now for some reason it's like it's lightened up maybe we'll give it another spray but yeah i've got a guy who's asked for 24 hours sort of grace to decide whether they want the skoda or not um he's asked for a discount and i've told him no because uh, he wants me to do the tires and he wants me to sort out a stereo so uh that's the way it is anyway so i'm a bit held up today because i've got to do a warranty claim and this is one thing you do have to factor in to this is that you occasionally need to do warranty claims i do use a third party warranty company but for this one it was a friend so i didn't bother because i was going to probably do whatever went wrong with it anyway and this one the um slave cylinder has gone on the clutch so unfortunately today i'm tied up with that rather than cracking on with sales cars the brava now has its new cam belt fitted so that's all been done my buddy Stuart did that for me, so that saved me a bit of time, much appreciated. He's done the cam belt for me, because I'm about limited to basic Tipex cam belts. Um, he does the more complex stuff. The thing that was leaking was the, um, you can't see in this light, but the thing that was leaking, turn the light on, uh, was down here was the EGR coolant pipe was leaking um, from the uh, gasket down the bottom here. Now, we'll pop that in, put it all back together, hopefully, it wasn't caused by pressure with an engine you know it could be if it had a head gasket that the pressure of the head gasket was causing that gasket to go um, or it could be poor fitting when somebody did work on it before we won't really know until we get up and running so this week's been a real this bunch of cars has been a real mixed bag of problematic stuff and that's just the way the cookie will crumble sometimes you just gotta knuckle down crack on with it do a few late nights try and catch up um you know a lot of people say to me you know just write the logan off send it back to auction it doesn't make any sense to me it was driving it's got a full tank of fuel it was driving and um, when it had the accident you can see it's properly had an accident someone said oh did someone run it into a wall on purpose because they damaged the engine to try and make an insurance claim i just uh, i think you can think things through far too much something's happened when it's had the accident i think it's not the timing out or something and i think if we can get the timing back in line I think it should run okay fingers crossed um i can't even cross my fingers are too dirty mate. fingers crossed on that front my 106 rally should be here by now but the uh 
transport driver got his knickers in a twist because he had to wait an hour for the uh, bank payment to clear because I hadn't used the person before I was picking up the rally from so I didn't want to pay them in full up front because um, I had been burnt by that before so he had to wait for the bank transfer to clear and it took an hour to be fair he was there an hour early so he shouldn't really have his knickers in a twist but he says I'm not going to get the car till tomorrow now but um, I use them a lot no point falling out over it so uh, I'll just wait for the car tomorrow I've got enough on my plate already haven't I and I don't I can't be doing my own projects. So anyway, let's crack on, finish the 500. Once I finish the 500, I really do want to get onto the Honda in the corner um, because that is uh, just tart up a little bit because it's already got the long MOT on it in the service. So I just want to tart that up and get that for sale because I know a little Honda Jazz will sell no problem at all. Because we're in a mad rush now. We've had a really good month, but good is never good enough. And years and years and years of having sales targets in other industries, it's got me targeting myself quite heavily and despite it being a lockdown month I could have a record month if I can get the rest of these cars ready and it's obviously payday weekend a lot you know that last the last weekend of the month can be absolutely crazy with people wanting cars so I really do need to knuckle down and get some more of these out yeah this is the PCV valve from the Kia Picanto I was on about earlier tiny little part really basic as a spring in that end um, and you can clean them out and put them back on again apparently but this one the spring you're supposed to check it by pushing something in the check the spring um goes back and returns okay but this one's flopping about all over the place so for the sake of 20 odd quid getting a new one in so fingers crossed that's all it is if it is i'll know that for future reference i imagine there's a lot of people bin them off if this does work i imagine there's a lot of people that have been binning off for the sake of just this little part but uh take the rose tinted glasses off could still be engine damage so we'll see what happens when the new bit comes so finally onto the honda got the wheel arch liner off i'm gonna have a look at the clip here let me fell over and see uh what we can do about getting this to sit it's obviously sitting out on the moment sitting proud something's not happy with the clip so need to have a look at that got the wheels with some wheel acid on so that they can clean them up and then tidy up these flaky bits here I think it would it detracts from the car quite a lot the flakiness on the alloys um but i'm not going to go crazy i'm going to touch up the rear bumper as well obviously repair this scratching here um spray out to about here i want to make it a clean and tidy car i'm not looking for immaculate because again the price point on this is oh just need to fill her in that wing um yeah so price point for this car is probably two and a half grand so I'm not going to go crazy on it just gonna get in I'll polish the headlights make it all look all look tidy right so let's crack on and work out what's happening with this clip I'll have to put you down and work it out for myself I got the bumper a bit better lined up now I started on the paintwork here just sanded the corner there to get rid of the scratches and, and then scuffed up to this area here I'm gonna basically blow out and blend here unfortunately I'm gonna have to go up to the wing panel to panel but I've not taken off too much paint there, so I don't have to put a thin coat there before I start putting a heavier coat down here. Um, but again, it doesn't have to be perfect for the age and value of the car. But I'm going to stay light to, late and try and get it done tonight. In the background, I've got the little Kia Picanto running. I'm going to try one last thing on that because the PCV valve didn't work. So I'm going to do an engine flush. I've been told that it could be something stick, sticking like a valve sticking to my that, so it's worth running an engine flush for it. So I'm getting it up to temp and I'll stick that in. You can hear she runs like a sewing machine. Um, the guys over in the other garages say they've never heard of the Kia's engines failing even when poorly serviced, so they really think this is worth a shot. And they've, even to the extent they've even given me a can of engine flush. So, a German engine flush, no doubt. No, and you see she doesn't smoke at all. Well, she actually is smoking a bit now. Actually, now she's got warm, she's smoking a bit. So last roll of the dice for the little Kia. If this doesn't work, she's going back to auction. Got the uh, filler primer on the corner on the Honda. Uh, after 400 grit, 600 grit, and then we're 1200 grit here where we're going to blend in. Um, wait for this draft, give it another wipe down, and then we'll go in with the, uh, go in with the color. So it's all keyed up. You can't see this, so it's all keyed up to the edge so that when I lacquer, it, um, it, I can then blend it in with uh, faders, uh, lacquer thinners for a bit late. 
we just forget what I'm saying. Right, the Kia. I'm gonna switch off in a second and drain the oil off and see how we're getting on with that. First make a brew though. While the Kia's oil's draining, I'm wet sanding the rear bumper on the uh, Jazz because I don't want to put any dust in the air because I've got my primer going off on the front there. Now, I prefer to wet sand anyway. I know you have to drive everything off afterwards, but I'd I see you get a better finish when you wet sand. And I hate the fact that pads clog up all the time when you dry sand. So that's 600 grit, wipe that off, clean that down. And then our thousand grit the rest of the area where I'm not gonna really be laying any color, just the lacquer and um, where I blend it in or attempt to blend it in. I should say this is metallic, which is always a nightmare. But then we will real fill the Kia and see what the score is. Maybe take a home runner tonight, see if any improvement in the morning. So we've got the color on, on the Honda Jazz. And here's where it blends into the original paint, which is obviously lighter because that's sanded. Uh, we won't really know what happens till we put the lacquer on, but less is definitely more when it comes to metallics. Lay it on too thick and you'll get a finish, which is uh, completely different to the rest of the paintwork. And obviously manufacturers didn't spend a fortune on metallic paints. They put on more lacquer than anything. So, um, and if you do it wet, the particles will stay uh, low. And if you do it lightly, they'll stick up and there might be more metallic for the rest of the body work. So it's a really hard one to get, even with a proper, with a gun. Again, this will be a cheap car, but it's certainly going to be a lot tidier than that horrible scrape and the bad touching that was there before. So got the heat lamp on the front wing there because I've been putting the lacquer on and it's starting to cloud up a bit because it's that cold. Um, but it's pretty cold. It's starting to cloud up so the gases, uh, the um, solvents can't escape it quickly enough. So I've got the heat lamp there to make sure that the uh, lacquer does go clear so in this kind of situation you've got to be really patient light coats otherwise it will uh, get wrecked uh, back the bumpers sanded down I've got plastic primer on there so I'm going to put the the uh, primer and the filler primer on and then start getting some color on that not sure what I will do as regards heat I might have to do it section at a time maybe this corner section then this section um, I'll have to see to ensure I get the heat on because this is going to be quite hard to lacquer this large an area with it being that cold again i wanted to show a lot of patience on that do some light coats and then potentially uh, not do a wet coat just do lots of light coats and then sand it flat after so not looking too shabby i guess we're not really going to know till we get it out into the daylight and light's not great for you guys to be able to see here either um but yeah initial signs are it doesn't look too bad color match because I haven't gone, well actually no, I think I might have got the colour pretty good, you know guys. Again, I'm sure when we get it out of sun we're going to see there's a bit more blotchiness. But I mean there's my two lines between the two paints. And obviously this has got to be flattened and polished it, yeah. On camera it looks a little bit darker but in real life it's very marginal. Certainly much better than that great big scrape we had there. But we've got to get on with the back now which has been um, obviously I put my plastic primer down then I put some white primer down white underneath silver is your best bet and instead of light dust I'm going to very lightly just keep dusting this I want to try and blend it in at both ends and then at the bottom as well I don't want it to really meet any edges at all I'm just going to lightly dust because it's now 8 o'clock and it's getting colder and colder just keep lightly dusting before I come around to the lacquer. I think the lacquer is going to be the tricky bit. I think I've nailed the colour. The lacquer is going to be the tricky bit. Really, shouldn't be doing a panel this big with a rattle can. But I want to crack on with this car now. Looking at numbers again, I think it's probably worth two, two, two nine five, two one nine five 2195 on a 2058 plate with 80,000 miles. So a cheap run around. Um, wheels I'm not getting around to tonight still in two minds about whether just to give them a good clean as it's a cheap car or whether to take the time to prep them obviously sells quicker if you if you do do them um, don't know, decide in the morning don't make any rough decisions tonight it's now coming on half eight and um, I've got the paint done um, obviously in hindsight I'm wishing I'd done a little repair down here but 
being sensible, that's probably another two two hours work at least three probably waiting for the filler to go off that kind of thing but all the scrapes on the corner of the bumpers you can see are gone my coat of lacquer's on it'll only need a little bit of a flat by the looks of it um surprisingly i really haven't got much dust in it either that's the advantage of the rattle cans versus the big gun out here in the workshop is you don't throw up a load of dust with the rattle can um you do get a bit dizzy um is <laughs> in here but uh yeah so uh yeah overall it looks okay what we've got there oh, we've got a little run there with the uh just spotted that with the uh fade out thinners which have caught a bit of a run so what i'll do is put the heat gun on heat lamp on that let's get this out of the way heat lamp on that and try and dry that run out um it's the only run i've got in it even though i laid the lacquer on quite thick on the last coat um but it would flat out afterwards anyway so it's, um, this corner here is where I sprayed the fade out thinner and if you're not careful the fade out thinner can make stuff run quite easily but now with the light off of it um, you can see the bumper looks much better so we sorted out that front corner we sorted this rear corner yeah again the question is going to be it's Saturday tomorrow do I photograph this and get it up for sale by just cleaning the wheels or do I do the wheels as well what I might do is photograph it uh, clean the wheels up, photograph it, get it up for sale, and then decide to do the wheels. At least it's up for sale then, and I can see the reaction of anyone that comes to see it early on, because in the photos, the wheels won't be obviously that bad. Um, and it is payday weekend, so I could really do with getting this one up, because obviously, other than this one, the only one I've got left is the Yaris to do the clutch on, and then that'll be all the cars gone. The Fabia, um, the Fabia outside, I've had a guy dithering back and forth asking to uh, me to hold it for him and then can't quite make up his mind. He wants me to give him like £300 for his 2001 Audi A2 with 200,000 miles on it. I told him I couldn't give him a discount on the Fabia. I told him his car was only worth 100 quid. Then he rang me up and said, can you uh, give me 300 quid for my car? And I said, well, you've got to realise that an over allowance on a part exchange is the same as discounting. And he wants me to put two tyres on it and he wants me to, to put a speaker in one of the doors because it's it's rumbling um i said you, you know if i'm if your car's only really worth 100 pounds it's got no mot as well they say one if it's only worth 100 pounds and i give you 300 pounds for it i'm giving you 200 pound off the car and i told you i can't afford to give you a discount and do the work on it some people don't seem to understand how the maths works you know the uh you can only spit the cake one way um that run is almost gone now it was coming up a second ago um just in the few minutes i've been wobbling on so um, hopefully that actually won't need a lot of work. So yeah, that's it for the night. I'm gonna go home now, 8.30. I'm gonna go and have some dinner. And um, but I just got a bit behind on things. I've stayed late tonight because I've got a bit behind on things with uh, things catching up. I've had a bit of a week of it, as you know. The Brava's still here. Uh, it's had the new cam belt fitted, but we're still waiting for the gasket to put the EGR valve back on and then I'll got to give it a good clean up on it. The Kia Picanto, I'm going to take it home tonight, see if it made any difference doing that oil flush on it. The Dacia Sandero, I've got booked in with somebody else because I've got too much short a time. We're going to, they're going to put the timing gear in and see if the Dacia Sandero um, has skipped the belt. And if it has skipped the belt, we'll have to see how badly. Uh, I'll have to get the head off and have a look at it. Um, I do think that car's worth trying to fix if I can. Uh, it's a good little car and there's plenty of profit left in it so yeah i'm not uh, my uh, 106 rally has turned up eventually um i think i'll do a completely separate video on the 106 rally on uh, what we do with that i think the game plan is going to be tidy up as much as i can and get out and use it and enjoy it before i start tearing it down for a resto otherwise i'll never get to have any fun with it so uh, that's it for now um i'm not sure if this is going to be the end of the video uh, for this one or whether i will um carry on i'll have to see how much content i've done so that i don't bother you to tears too much all right well if this is the end of the video thanks for watching and make sure you hit that subscribe button if it isn't see you in a sec